I rewrote my ZSH configuration and I think it's better than my previous one I had and today I'm just gonna take you through everything that I changed as well as my Tmux configuration. So I'm using Tmux right now, you may have seen some videos of me using Tmux but I didn't completely switch to it because of some problems. But right now I'm using Tmux because of a lot of features that I really love about it. You can see that we have this very cool status bar that is done with Tmux. And I'm just gonna go to my ZSHRC first. So obviously you've got lots of aliases like if I type in ESA which is a tool then it's gonna autocorrect that to ESA dash dash icons which is basically gonna show these uh, icons for the uh, files and all that that's pretty cool we've also got splash so we got splash zsh1 and zsh2 and i think we've got one for fast fetch there it is i've got some aliases for fast fetch i've got fast fetch red fast fetch blue and fast fetch green all of that jazz and the main thing here is that i stopped using oh my bosh for those who don't know what oh my bosh is it's like this prompt for ZSH. You can customize a lot of things about your prompt and I'm currently using just one that came pre-installed with all my ZSH called Robbie Russell. I think that's what it's called. Obviously I have my plugins. I've tried to reduce a lot of the plugins I'm using so right now it's just ZSH auto suggestions, ZSH syntax highlighting and auto completions. I've also installed the git plugin which gives us some aliases like gc for git commit or ga for git add all of that just and that's pretty much it for the zsh configuration let me actually open that up in my text editor of choice and we can see it's gonna export all my zsh set the zsh theme and then we have a custom plugins directory this way you install all of your plugins now the way this configuration works is if anything is not installed then this ZSHS he will automatically install it for you. So all you got to do is take this, put it in your ZSHRC, and it will work out of the box without any sort of extra steps. So it's gonna install uh, the plugins here if they don't exist. We're gonna install other suggestions, syntax highlighting, and ZSH completions. And then it's also gonna check for Zoxide. Now Zoxide is really cool, and I think everyone should be using it. The way it works is if I use Zoxide, which I can do with the Z command, and I go to .config for example, then I go back, then I can type in Z and then conf, and then it's gonna take me there. That's pretty magic if you ask me. And for example, let me Z into my desktop folder, go back, Z into desk, and it's gonna take me there. The Zoxide also brings another tool called ZI and this is the tool that I use all of the time. It's basically a fuzzy finder for everything. For example, let me go to my dot .files in Shesmoid. So you can simply search for that and this took me to this directory called dot .local slash share slash Shesmoid. Then maybe I can re-add my dot .files. Then I can use the git plugin. So I have these aliases. I could do a commit called updates. And then I can use git push. Yeah, why not, right? So let's just push those changes. Then you can see how when you open up a new Tmux window, it's going to open up in that same directory called, in this case, a shesmui. And it's going to do all of that. And a really cool thing is if I stop this full screen, I open up another window. You can see how it's sort of synced. If I type htop here, it's gonna open up htop there as well. That's because tmux has this thing called tmux-a for attach, then dash s main, which is my session. And what this is gonna do is use one single session for all of my terminals. And if it doesn't exist, it will create it. So if I go to my zshrc, here it is, here's our tmux right here, I could have just searched for it, but why not, right? And what it does is, it checks if tmux is already running, and if it is not, then we can start this command called tmux new session attach dash s main. So if the main session doesn't exist, it will create it, if it does exist, it will just attach onto that system. 
and we also have this path settings we'll add like dot local bin to path and also add something like an arc scripts path which is just a whole bunch of scripts that i have and maybe i'll add some other stuff in there but that's it and the end of your zsh you just add this line to source or my zsh that's basically what makes everything work properly so let's just full screen this and one thing I do actually love about Tmux is what I just explained right here. The fact that all of these are synced together. It's also something that I hate about Tmux because whenever I want to do something like one terminal and one hit shop, I can do that because it will open up in both of the terminals. And we'll go to our Tmux configuration next, right? So we go to dot Tmux dot con, which is where we configure Tmux. And here it is. So this is written with a little bit of help of AI and a little bit of tweaking by myself because I'm I don't know I don't know much Tmux. I followed lots of YouTube tutorials and added some other stuff out of that. So we have mouse support because I'm I don't know a lot of Tmux key bindings. So temporarily we have mouse support on. And then we have some uh, the prefix key is control. A, we have the I mode for copy, that means we can do something like, and we could use VI key bindings to copy stuff basically. And this is actually a very a big configuration. It's using the uh, color scheme here called Monokai Soda, which is the color scheme that I'm currently using in my system. I change it a lot actually, so uh, I don't use one single color scheme. I usually change it, although I'm loving this color scheme so far. Who knows? Maybe I'll change it. And we have some uh, colors here for the status bar. It's using this uh, power line style status bar. You can see how we are configuring that. And then we have our plugins. So it's using TPM, which is the Tmux plugin manager. And then it's going to manage our sessions with these plugins Tmux Resurrect and Tmux Continue. Then we have some productivity plugins like Tmux Yank, which I'm pretty sure just copies to the clipboard. Tmux Open, Copy, Get, all of that stuff. And then we've got some initial plugins. We've got Tmux Power. It's probably a power line plugin. Now, sure, I'm not sure. And then we have some stuff for the Tmux plugins options. Then we finally initialize TPM. That's it for my Tmux configuration. It's not much, but I really like where this is at. You know, you've got a very nice looking Tmux configuration. It has some nice features like this clock over here that's kind of cool if you ask me and that's pretty much it for my zsh configuration screen so now we can go to our terminal configuration so we will open up that in emacs we go to dot config kitty and then kitty.con and i actually use just a lot of kitty key bindings to change this so you've got stuff like your color scheme monokai soda and it's going to include theme.com so this is generated by Kitty. so if i go ahead and kill tmux because there's some error with using the key kitten command on tmux we do kitten theme then we can pick a theme i picked uh, monokai soda and that's our theme right there and as for kitty.com it has may not much actually this is the default config I put all of my stuff in the bottom. Obviously, I have the window padding. I set the confirm OS window close. So if I set this to 1, I'll just show you what it does. Let's say I open up a uh, name here. I can close this and it's going to give this thing. I don't really like it. So let's just set that to 0. Tab bar mode is power line. And tab bar mode is this thing. So you can see how in the bottom there, there's these tabs. You don't really need them with Tmux, but it's nice to have. And then you have the background opacity. So you want to set that to something like 0 0.8. Then you can, then you can see your wallpaper on that. And that's pretty much it for my terminal configuration, as well as my Tmux and ZSH configuration. So I hope you enjoy this video and bye bye.